Hi, it's Tom from Brain Shorts, and today I want to show you how to make a simplified version of my flow through worm composter using this black hefty trash can. Stay tuned. Welcome back subscribers. If you haven't joined us yet, you can do so by clicking on the Green Shorts icon that's going to appear in the bottom right hand corner of the screen throughout the video. Usually my prototype designs, of which this is one, are a lot more complicated than they need to be. And this flow through worm composter is no exception. But the act of building it and then operating it helps me understand how I can simplify the design and what components need to be kept. The new design will retain the trimmer line element that supports the soil column here on the bottom. But we're gonna do away with all the complicated tapering that we did on this trash can. I'm convinced that the taper that's already on this trash can is going to allow our soil column to compress as the compostables move toward the bottom as they're digested by the worms. We're also going to use the existing trash can lid instead of the lid we created. I'm also going to add a mechanism for easy harvesting by moving the composter side to side. Alright, enough talking. Let's get building. We're going to start by creating a hole in the bottom of our trash can. It's important that the hole is square in shape. So we're actually going to follow these contours but square them up. I also want to keep the curve on the bottom of this trash can because that's adding structural rigidity. It's also going to act as our compression zone. We'll also need rails for the trash can to slide on and these sides will serve as those rails. The ribs in the corner of the trash can also need to be trimmed back. I love that tool, but it's a little messy. I'm going to clean up my cut with a sanding sponge. Now that our trash can is prepped, let's do some measurements. First, the outside width, which is 10 inches. Then the widest outside dimension, which is 13. And then our inside width, which is 7 and 5 eighths. And check that in a couple spots since we have a little bit of unevenness here. Actually, we'll call it 7 and a half to be safe. We'll be building sides, legs, and feet. I'll explain the reason for feet later. For this, I'm using scrap lumber left over from the construction of my house, which I saved for a purpose like this. The length of the base will be two times the length of the trash can, so 13 times two, 26 inches. The width of the base will be the outer width of the trash can, which was 10 inches. This may seem long for the length of the trash can, but when we get to how we're gonna harvest this, it'll all make sense. The legs are two by fours ripped down to one and a half by one and a half, and they're 14 inches long. The feet are also made from two by four that I ripped down to one inch wide, and those are cut to 13 inches in length, that being the 10 inches of width plus an inch and a half and an inch and a half for the width of the legs. One more component of the frame will be rails that sit underneath this section. The trash can will actually slide along those rails. And our harvesting bar will be mounted to the inside of the rail. So we need the, the width of the rail to be a little bit more than the width of this area on the trash can, which is looks like about an inch and a quarter. So I'll rip some two by four down to an inch and a quarter. But you could always just use a two by four which is an inch and a half wide for that width as well if you don't have a table saw to do the ripping. 
The first step in building the frame will be attaching the rails to the long sides of the base. We use an A2x4 as a spacer for my drop down there. Now we'll attach the legs to the long sides. I'm going to tack it with a nail to hold it in place and then add two screws. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a leaf blower. I'm making sure to line up this dimension right here so it's flush. I'm not as concerned with the outside dimension over here. I'm also lining up the top of the leg at the top of the side. Split it. There's a knot right here and I probably should have pre-drilled this. And certainly when I'm coming in this way, I'm gonna pre-drill these sections just to make sure we don't split this wood. Now that the rails are on the side, let's connect the sides together with the end pieces. These I'm gonna pre-drill and use caution to avoid hitting the screws. Now that our base is done, let's test fit the trash can. So basically this setup will allow us to have two positions. A static position and then a harvesting position. For the trash can will get pushed to one side, allowing the castings to be harvested. But we gotta put the feet on because as we'll be pushing this back and forth, it's gonna be pretty heavy. So we need to be able to put our foot on a piece of wood between the two legs in order to hold it down as we push it. And that's where the feet come in. The way that the harvesting element is going to work is by using a piece of aluminum, flat bar aluminum that I picked up at my local home improvement store. And we're going to make a bar, a band, that we're going to bend up, it'll go across and then down. So this bar will extend up into the trash can through the hole and act as a cutter. So as we slide the trash can across from one side to the other, it's going to slice off a layer of the compost, composted castings. There's a new dog in town. It's not really yippy. It's more annoying. But we're moving soon. So we're going to make the cutter bar. We'll call it the harvesting bar. The first step of doing that, we're going to mark center. On our bar, we're gonna mark an inch and a half. For the two by four rail we'll be nailing into, 
And I, I think I'm going to start out with a 3 inch rise. I'm not sure exactly what the optimal depth would be for harvesting, but we'll start with this and see how it goes. Then we'll mark our 7.5 inch width. Of, and that's the width of the cutout in the bottom of the trash can. Then our 3 inch drop. And an inch and a half for the 2x4. I'll mark a couple holes on here that we'll drill on each end. I want that to be pretty secure. And now we'll cut it off and then bend it. You're curious, this is my twisted Sharpie from Greg's Garage. I'll put the link in the description below where you can get one. And they're numbered. I have number 21. Greg's a buddy on YouTube. He's also a pretty cool guy. Check him out. Let's give this a quick deburr. Now we'll throw it in the vise and bend it. Let's test fit this, and then we're gonna sharpen one edge here so it cuts nice and cleanly. The dog likes it. The space that matters is where it is right here versus where it is right here. Once we're up inside the trash can, it can be a little wider uh, because we have some space there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and screw this in and then do the shaping on the base. Put this in with some galvanized roof screws. It's pretty rigid. I like it. Now what I want to do is test fit the trash can here. I'm happy with that. Now let's sharpen it. When you're grinding metal, a face shield is a good idea. When the composter is working, it'll stay on this side. When I'm ready to harvest, I'll slide it over here. So my cutting edge actually needs to be on this side. I switched the grinder from the cutoff wheel to a grinding wheel. One thing to keep in mind is that when aluminum gets molten, it doesn't glow. It's the same color. Aluminum can still be hot, even if it doesn't look hot. Before we measure, we we'll drill the holes for the trimmer wire. I'm going to put a mark where the opening in the trash can ends. Then I'm going to transfer that line to the outside of the base. Then I'll measure down an inch and a half for our 2x4 depth. Do that in two spots. And then draw a line along that depth. Working back from my cutter bar, which I've marked here on the 2x4. I'm gonna mark off half inch increments. Until I reach the end mark. And now we drill. Make sure your drill bit is clearing the 2x4 rail. We need to clean up the inside here a little bit before we string the trimmer wire. Now it's time for the trimmer wire. Lace it through the holes. Leave this a little slack till I know exactly how much I need. Of course, I'm 
I'm that much short. When you've threaded the trimmer line all the way through, secure the end with a screw and trim off any excess. Then, pull the line back through to remove any slack. The purpose of the trimmer line is to support the soil and the composter when it's on the composting side. Screw in the other end of the line, wrapping the line around the screw in the direction that it's going in so that the final turns of the screw will tighten the line. Instead of building a complicated custom lid, like I did on my last flow through worm composter, I'm just going to use the stock lid that came with the trash can. This lid I think is great, it opens up, it's relatively tight, there are some gaps here but that won't make that much of a difference. But I'm still going to add in some air holes and screen them. So the first step to do that, we need to roughen up the plastic so it will accept the adhesive. I'm just going to use a sanding sponge and this recessed area here is perfect for the holes. So, scuff this up. The sponge really isn't aggressive enough. I think I want a deeper tooth on that. Hang on. This piece of floor sander paper still has a couple rough spots in it. Let me use this. That's more like it. I'm using some kitchen and bath adhesive caulk. So it's important that it's not just caulk, but that it has adhesive properties too. You could also use Gorilla Glue here, or polyurethane glue, that would work as well. Or perhaps some two-part epoxy. Got one and a quarter inch hole saw here. I'm just gonna do three holes in the top. I could have measured this and made them even, but it's a worm composter. They won't know the difference. Let's clean these up a little bit. I got a couple of scraps of screen here. I want to see if I have one that will cover all three holes neatly. One piece that is. Right, that'll work. So if you are doing this with a bigger piece of screen, by all means, give yourself more space around this. But I want to use this scrap, so I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna do a thin layer around here, sort of where I remember this screen going. My main goal is to keep it from getting on the outside where you can see it through the screen, so wish me luck. Now I'll just place the screen here, make sure I'm covering all those holes, getting enough adhesion. I'll work the adhesive through the screen carefully. I'm trying to pull away from the edges here. I got a thin spot here or there, I'm gonna just squeeze out a little bit more. thicken it up. Alright, let's see how I did. Not bad. A couple spots where I can see through there. It goes on white, but dries clear. Alright, so lid's done. Let's put it on. Well, there you have it, folks. A simpler, easier to build flow-through worm composter. We're making better use of the trash can, and I'm convinced that this taper is going to be plenty to keep the worms migrating up and only compost harvesting out the bottom. And this bin should be as simple to harvest as sliding the trash can from one side to the other. The calculations on this design were pretty straightforward. But if you'd like to save a little time, I'm making the plans available for download 
from my website for $1.99. That also helps support the channel. For that, I'm grateful. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for a new DIY video almost every Friday.